God is using Trump to infiltrate and expose with a global, unified, righteous and justice army. It's happening more and more. So you can expect more and more things happening in this arena and also more and more in the area of individuals, CEOs stepping down because they're being exposed. Politicians being exposed. It's happening. We're in a time and season where the push for justice and righteousness should be a part of our life. Amen? Amen. You know, as we were praying, we are in, I can only tell, it's just amazing to me what's happening. It's amazing to me. I mean, to be alive right now and not be a part of what God is doing is a bummer. I mean, my goodness. It's better, going, better than going to the movies. I'm telling you, this is a, a, a intense flick we're in. <laughs> Would you turn to Genesis 8, please? Glory. Satan's military is trying to cause war, and they keep getting outwitted. And their servants that have taken positions in offices have nothing to offer but criticism. Promotion of racism, hatred, and lies of false promises. They have nothing to offer but deception. Nothing. And it's happening. And Genesis chapter 8 and verse 13. Oh, glory. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dried. Then the Lord spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds, cattle, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, and whatever creeps on the earth, according to their families, went out of the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and every clean bird, offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is what? Evil. The imagination of man's heart is evil. In other words, it hasn't been taken control by the Holy Spirit yet. From his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night, shall not cease. Again, the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Evil is associated with rebellious and unyielding. It's associated with rebellious and unyielding. Remember, the heart is the core of your being. It is the core of who you are. What expresses out of your heart determines whether your spirit is contaminated or not. Amen? One of the things that I find to be the most deadliest weapons of Satan's kingdom besides, we know his weapon is what? Deception and his power is fear. In this deception, one of his greatest tools is compromise. It is so easy to fall in a place of compromise. 
And that's when a person's heart becomes compromised. It's called a compromised heart. Why? Because when it becomes compromised, evil imaginations come again. And listen, it doesn't mean that it's, you, you know, it's skulls and crossbones and demons. What it means is it becomes rebellious and unyielding. Amen? In Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. I'm going to share something before we go any further. A compromised heart is a heart that shapes God into their own agenda. When God is trying to shape them into his will. Amen? A compromised heart is when an individual is trying to shape God into their agenda. When God is trying to shape them into his will. That is called a compromised heart. Is everybody okay? So we know that a compromised heart has set limitations on it. There's limitations of surrender. They will only surrender so far. Limitations of service. Limitations of obedience. Limitations. And these limitations are controlled by fear. Everyone say fear. fear. I'm going to say this again because this is vitally important. A compromised heart is a heart that shapes God's, God into their agenda when God is trying to shape them into his will. Amen? A compromised heart has set limitations of obedience, submission, service, surrender. And is controlled by fear. There is a point of compromise where as the compromise increases, it becomes an area to where it becomes idolatry. I don't like to say what I'm about to say, but I've got to. The falling away starts with compromise. Again, it leads to idolatry. We are going to see many marriages destroyed by this. There'll be a point in limitation where the spouses are done. They're done. Why? Because they're serving and the other's not. Does everybody understand that? Marriages have been destroyed already by compromise. And they will continue to increase more and more and more. Because the other one that's compromised, even though they're sanctified by the one that's connected, amen, the one that's compromised will continue to promote idolatry. And the other one is going to finally get to the point where, done, bye, I'm serving the Lord. Does everybody understand that? Because the presence and the pressure and the intensity of demonic influence in the righteous of God is increasing. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, curses a man who trusts in man. Hello. Means they trust in themselves. And makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the what? From the Lord. It's compromise, isn't it? See, some people think that just being saved is sufficient. I'm saved. I'm a good person now. You're deceived. The word says nobody's good. There's only one good and one righteous. That's him. See, when we look at ourselves in that condition, we've already disconnected from him. 
That's, that heart has been compromised. What does he say? Seek me with all of your heart. People can't even do it in worship. How do they expect it will be him out there? If you can't do it in worship, you certainly can't do it out there in following him. You'll still be being led by your own emotional heart. Amen? Can't even make it to service enough times. How do you expect to, you know, get in God's presence? Again, there are those who still come to service and are still disconnected, but still, praise God. <laughs> Curse is a man who trusts in himself and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord because they've compromised. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. In other words, he'll become drier and drier and drier. And shall not see when good comes. Hello? They sh Why? Because their discernment has been nullified. They won't see when God is trying to offer something or come by to give something. They won't, they'll miss the blessing. Does everybody understand? Or they'll miss the way of escape from a trap. But they shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt which is not an assault land which is not inhabited. But blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be a, like a what? A tree planted by the water. Let me tell you, a tree planted by the water flourishes, is vibrant. It, it oozes fresh air, you know? <laughs> There's a refreshing around that individual. It says, they should be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear. Will not what? Fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green and you will not be anxious in the year of what? Drought. Remember, fear. Fear. We just talked about it. What a compromised heart has set limitations, doesn't it? And its controls, limitations are controlled by what? Fear. See, they're really not sold out. They say they are, but they're really not. God tests everyone. He knows exactly where we are. Oh, hallelujah. And he will not fear when the heat comes, but it, its leaves will be green, and he will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Again, verse 9, the heart is what? Deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. In other words, he challenges and tests us. He wants to know whether you're faithful to commit to what you first started with. I test the mind, the thoughts. Even to give every man according to his way. So what you sow is what you reap. According to the fruit of his doings. Wow. In Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> There's three wills of God, good, acceptable, and perfect. Good, acceptable, and perfect. Some people are only content on good and acceptable. And they'll only get to a level of good and acceptable. But they're more prone to be deceptive. They're more prone to be taken out. But then there's a the perfect will of God, and that is an individual that is sold out, wants to do the perfect will of God. Matthew 6, verse 8. You know, we're to be content, but not content. You know what I'm saying? We never want to fall in a place into lukewarm, 
it is dangerous. And that's where a compromised heart comes into a place. They become lukewarm. And what does the word say? When you become lukewarm, God will spit you out of his mouth. Sheesh. That's pretty uh, intense. But you know, when you go back to look at what God has done for you, what God has done for me, I owe him and will forever owe him. I am in debt to him. <laughs> oh, glory. In verse 8, let's speak it. Uh, Matthew 6, 8. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, do what? Pray. He was given a guideline. He said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. In other words, holy and awesome is your name. What's he praying? Your kingdom come and your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget of our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. In other words, it's a guideline to prayer. But I want you to look at something in verse 10. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a parallel. That means there's two missions involved. There's an earthly mission, which is temporary, and there's a heavenly mission, which is eternal. We're to align our will with his will to fulfill the eternal mission in the temporary realm. Amen? If we do not, then we're, that's all we're doing is fulfilling our temporary mission and missing the eternal mission completely. And it can't compromise that. You can't just allow the eternal mission to have its place when you feel like it. Because it will never fall into place. It will always be stolen because it's not got nothing to connect to. Does everybody understand? I don't know if you can see this or not. So you have the earthly mission, which we are in a constant with. Amen? But then there's the eternal mission that is released, and it's trying to parallel with the earthly mission. But if we're not in a constant parallel and align with it, it can't get it full connection. It constantly bounces off until we're willing to accept it and parallel it. That means the perfect will of God can never be established in a, perfect, in a person's life. Never. In fact, for some people, even the acceptable will won't be established in a person's life. Is everybody okay? James 4. This is a compromised heart. Oh, hallelujah. James chapter 4, verse 13. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. Come now, you who say tomorrow, today and tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. That's the earthly will. Whereas you do not know what, to, what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the what? Lord wills we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, it is what? It is sin. It is sin. Oh, hallelujah. If the Lord wills, that's what we should say all the time. In other words, whatever he wants. The drift from his will will bring <laughs> the 
conviction and then affliction. It will bring conviction, then affliction. Especially to those who are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because they have the power to say yes. Does everybody understand? Again, the drift from his will will bring conviction and then affliction to those baptized in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1. What does the word say? Uh, when I, I, I was afflicted when I what? Went astray. Amen. See, coming to church and fellowshipping is the beginning. It's what you do afterwards. We come to fellowship to be refreshed, imparted, and get connected so we can be of service to him wherever we go, whatever he wants us to do. And also so we can expose our dirty laundry. And that don't mean your clothes. Hello. Acts chapter 1. Is everybody there? Verse 8. Let's speak it. But you shall receive what? You shall receive power. You shall receive what? power to say yes to him and no to the devil you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be what witnesses does a good witness have a compromised heart no you shall be witnesses to me in jerusalem and all judea samaria and to the end of the earth power we will receive power to be a witness for his service what to serve him Compromised heart. We are entering a time we call it the falling away. How did it begin? Because it starts with a compromised heart. They'll be drifting from their call, their purpose, and destiny. And one of the things that becomes compromised is their identity. Remember, that's the first thing the devil wants to steal or compromise is who you are. People lose sight of it or what God sees them as. And so they look at what they see them as, what their family sees them as, what the world sees them as, instead of what God sees them as. That is a compromised heart. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. I, again, I can't emphasize to you. I mean, I, I must want to weep and cry because it is affecting my heart so much in the compromise and the loss and the division in the body of Christ. In homes, in marriages, the compromise. It's destroyer. It's destroying families. It's destroying how can we lose sight of what God has done for us? That becomes, it's, it's it like it's erased. You know what I'm saying? It like it's erased. Man, how can we forget where we came from? I, I can never forget that. I don't live in it, but I'll never forget it. I will never forget the pain, the agony, the torment. I'll never forget it, the addiction life, the hurts of myself and how many people I hurt. I won't forget whatever happened. Why? Because I won't forget what he's done for me and how he turned it all around. I can't. And when I begin to erase that or block it out, my heart becomes compromised. Amen? How can we have compassion and show others when we, when we begin to erase what God has done for us? 
in verse 21. Let's speak it, please. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel of honor, for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for what? Every good work. Now, wait a minute. It says, here's the key. This is what he's trying to tell us. If you cleanse yourself from the latter, in other words, past emotional attachments have caused compromise. There's the answer. Past emotional attachments have caused the compromise. And the word says that anything we build on that God set us free on is called an abomination. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 22. So how did it begin? Reattaching into what? Emotional attachments in the past. People, places, and things. That's how the enemy can only get us, right? From our past. He can't get us from the future. So if you have a compromised heart, you're living in both, but you're not living fully from the future. That means the enemy has access to you. Amen? Oh, verse 22. Flee also youthful what? What's, well, you, look, at youth flying forward, is it? Well, for some of us it is. But anyways, no. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> youthful is your path, right? That's why we used to be called little devils. <laughs> you little devil. But pursue what? Righteousness, faith, love, peace. With those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure, pure heart. Pure. A pure heart is a non-compromised heart. It's not double-minded. It's not unstable. It's stable and solid. Amen? A pure heart. Verse 23, but it says avoid what? Foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate what? Strife. Or let me tell you something else what it generates. Drift. Verse 24. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Now, wait a minute. I want you to grab hold of something. There's a physical quarrel and there's a spiritual quarrel. Hello? That spiritual quarrel is in your mind. That's where the overtaking is always trying to come. Because if he can overtake you in the spiritual quarrel, argument, he's got you. But you'll know the fruit of it because if you're being overtaken by the physical, you're certainly overtaken by the spiritual. Amen? A servant of the Lord must uh, must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Able to what? Able to what? Able to what? Teach. 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 Well, if you haven't learned it, how can you give it? And if you're not practicing it, how can you keep it? Able to teach and be what? Patient. That's not a patient in the hospital. <laughs> this is one that's enduring. Amen? In humility, that means humbleness, not pride or arrogance. Correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their what? Senses of true reality and be able to discern whether they're compromised or they're solid. Amen? Amen? And escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive to, by him to do his will. In other words, they're not aligned. Amen? Does everybody understand it? They're not aligned. They're out of alignment. Why is this? Because of a compromised heart. We're to cleanse ourselves from all past emotional attachments. They compromise the heart, and they compromise service. People become more servant to themselves than they are to God. 
2 Corinthians 5. from call, purpose, and destiny. Why? Because your identity has also been compromised. If your heart's compromised, your identity is compromised. Amen? Glory! Verse 16, 2 Corinthians 5. Oh, yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 16. Therefore, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. New. See, every day things are maintaining. So you must maintain new to get new. Does everybody understand that? So you're maintaining all the new things in your life. You're maintaining that new creation. You're maintaining that new zeal. You're maintaining these things. You're always setting the Lord before you. are maintaining these things. And then God releases new. Because what comes from new is more new. Verse 18, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of what? Reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of what? Reconciliation. Now, then we are what? We are what? We are ambassadors. Ambassadors. For Christ, not for yourself. As though God were pleading through us, and this is what I'm sensing and feeling very strongly today, that God is pleading through us to stop the compromise. Stop it. I'm telling you, compromise will destroy. Amen? It is a destroyer. It's not a common thing. It's everywhere. It's not just something that's common to some people. They don't even know it. They don't even understand it. That they are being compromised in everything. Trying to shape God to fulfill their will. Instead of allowing God to shape them to fulfill his will. Amen. Amen? It's a terrible place to be. And it is dangerous. Very dangerous. We're seeing it all, all over. I'm telling you, the falling away started with compromise, and it is increasing, and it will increase. Many people will die. God will take many people home. Marriages will be destroyed. All kinds of things are going to happen because God is only putting up with so much. We are reaching that level. Remember, the greater the anointing, Remember what happened to Sapphira and Ananias, right? Because the anointing was so strong. The greater the anointing, the quicker the judgment. I don't want to say quicker. I want to say the harsher the judgment. <coughs> now, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be what? Reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in him. Anyone who ditches the will of God for their own will is in the flesh. I'm going to say it again. Anyone that ditches God's will for their will is in the flesh. Service to the king and his kingdom should be priority to a life of a believer in the spirit. That is your priority and my priority. My priority is service to the king and then to his kingdom. Other than that, I have a compromised heart. Then I'm still serving me, and I'm considered flesh. 1 Corinthians 4. Oh, happy days.
Verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. I mean, think about this. What always gets us in trouble? Compromise. Amen? Amen? That's what gets everybody in trouble. They compromise. Isn't that what the devil did to Eve? He got her to what? Compromise. Verse 1, let a man so consider us as servants to, of Christ. In other words, servants to the what? Anointing. The anointing does not serve you. You serve the anointing. And stewards of the mysteries of God. My goodness, look what God has given us. We're to be stewards of revelations. Stewards of truth. We are messengers of the greatest message. Verse four, 2. Moreover, it is required. Every said required. That means to be qualified or maintain qualification. In stewards that one be found what? Faithful. That means consistent. Consistent, uncompromised, unwavering, unstable. Moreover, it is required. This is a requirement. Does everybody understand this? We are required as, a, as stewards to be faithful, no matter what. Faithful. Verse 3, but with me it is very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is who? The Lord. Why? Because there's a relationship. It's not a religion. It's not a false reality. It's not an imagination. There is a true relationship. Not because you belong to a church or a youth group or you belong to some organization that represents religiosity. It's where your relationship is with him and where your identity is true. Because if your relationship ain't with him, you don't have a true identity. You're still a compromiser. Hello? Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Wow. Again, we are servants to the anointing and stewards of revelations of his character and truth. In 2 Corinthians 3. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 3. See, when there's lack of, when, when compromise comes, is, uh, one of the things that begin to nullify is discernment. Discernment. That's why people are so easily tricked. So easily swayed. Then they become very offensive. Compromise. What's a protector of compromise? Offense. Offense. Why? Because it's a protector of self, isn't it? Amen? Protects fear, protects pride. Offense. Oh, hallelujah, verse 1. Second Corinthians 3, verse 1, let's speak it. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation to, your, or, to you or letters of accommodation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ. Ministered by us, written by, not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of flesh, that is of the heart. And we have such trust through God, through Christ toward God, that we are, we are not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from who? God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Whether you believe it or not, when you become a Christian, you are a minister of the new covenant. You're either a minister of the new covenant, or you're still a minister of Satan's kingdom. Not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Again, we are epistles of Christ, carriers of the spirit of life, following the law of the spirit of life, which is deny yourself, pick up the cross and fight, 
and then you can follow. Anything less than that is compromised. Anything less than that is a compromised heart destined to fall into harmful traps, still trying to shape God into their will and rejecting the shaping of themselves into the will of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2. What is the law of the spirit of life again? Deny yourself, pick up the cross and fight and follow. 2 Timothy 2. In verse 1. Is everybody there? You therefore, my son, children, be strong in the grace which is God's plan that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must what? Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. In other words, the emotional past. That he may what? Please him who enlisted him as a what? Soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in what? All things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. What does it say? If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. I want to say that again. If we endure, he shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. A compromised heart will deny him. Maybe not in everything, but it only takes one thing. Verse 13, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Soldiers of Christ, a life of service, not a life of vanity. And I'm going to close at Acts 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 9. Praise God. You know, as we begin to learn the Bible and know where the locations are, then we go to it. Amen? But if you graduated from this place and you're still not following when we're reading, you have a compromised heart and you're in danger. Do you understand that? Get it. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Verse 1. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he has journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell on the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do? This is how we began it. 
This is how we need to end it. That means, well, Lord, what do you want me to do? All the way home. Not just at the beginning when we were in need, but now every day. Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do? Don't lose sight where he brought you from. Amen? Don't let your heart become compromised. Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. So we see here, what do you want me to do? And then Jesus gives the one command. He says, go and rise, and then I'm going to tell you what to do later. Amen? Amen. This is how he operates. He doesn't give you the full plan right off the bat. Amen? It's page by page. Glory to glory. Grace to grace. So he's, first thing is, Lord, what do you want me to do? Go here. How many of y'all know God sent you here? Amen. Amen. If you know he sent you here, then you, that's what he said. Go here, and then I'll what? Tell you what to do. Amen. Amen? Why? So we can be trained up. So we can do our part. But if we have an unwilling, compromised heart, we can't fulfill it. We're still living for ourselves and not him. And that's dangerous. Very dangerous. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Everybody okay? Yeah. I know it's a little harsh this morning, but praise God we need it because we need rescue. Yeah. A compromised heart. Yeah. Say no <laughs> to a compromised heart. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal this word with the blood and the anointing so it grows and bears fruits for your glory that we may be an expression and an extension of your will, service to the king and your kingdom and carriers of truth to this world that is lost, compromised in a life of deception in Jesus' name. Anybody sitting in that?